If I asked you to think about the most beautiful example of nature that you could possibly think of that you've either seen on a picture or you've seen in real life, what would you think of? Feel free to post in the comment below and I bet that it wouldn't look anything like this. I can't come up with a single nice thing to say about this picture. Uh, I'm sure there won't be many poems written about anything involving visual imagery which includes massive piles of rubbish and dirt. But the point I'm making here is that this is a very common scene throughout the developed world. All the plastic materials that we use, all the plastic goods, so plastic bottles, things like that, any rubbish that we produce and we put in our bins is collected and taken to a dump which looks something like this. Now while the key here is that this looks awful and it's clearly not very nice on the eye, there is a more serious issue here. Land has to be taken up in order for us to fill it with this rubbish. That land could be used for things like farming, it could be natural land which hasn't been farmed, but obviously wildlife will live there, there will be certain species which will grow there. And in order for us to create one of these rubbish dumps, we have to destroy the land and move all the animals away. This might mean that we are killing the animals, killing plants, killing all the wildlife around there, and obviously that is not a good thing at all. And so another problem is that the more and more that we consume all these plastic goods and the more and more that we throw away our rubbish, the land is being used up and used up and then when a landfill site is full, I mean this site, going back to it, this site looks like it's going to be full up fairly soon because there's not much empty space there, well then we need to find somewhere else to chuck the rubbish. And that creates a problem because where does the rest of the land come from? We're going to keep using up more and more land, which could be used for other things, or it could be just a natural environment in which other organisms are allowed to grow and thrive. So we are destroying ecosystems, we are polluting the environment, and in general, it's just not a very good thing. One main problem here is that when we bury rubbish, many plastics are not biodegradable biodegradable and that means that if we leave them let's say for example we put a plastic bottle on the floor in a in a forest or in the woods that plastic bottle would still be there hundreds of years later and that is because nature microorganisms in the soil um, and other decomposers don't have the ability to digest the plastic that those bottles are made out of that is what biodegradable means biology or life cannot degrade or break down that plastic and so scientists have, in fairly recent history, found ways around it and have produced biodegradable plastics. One example is to put granules of cornstarch, granules of cornstarch into our plastics, incorporate them into the plastic. Now this is good because the cornstarch is actually food for microorganisms. Microorganisms will break down the cornstarch and if that is separated within the plastic that means that as the cornstarch is broken down the plastic is broken down into small pieces. The problem there though is depending on what plastic it is those small pieces of plastic are still plastic. They haven't been fully biodegraded. They haven't been fully digested and so they're still not in the form that we want them to be. One way around this is to use a plastic called PLA and that stands for poly brackets, remember from the last videos, lactic acid. So we have lactic acid and we put loads of them together and you get polylactic acid. And you probably have heard of lactic acid before, it's what causes us to feel fatigue when we do exercise, so this is quite an interesting crossover really. PLA, or polylactic acid, is fully biodegradable. So fully, excuse the handwriting, fully biodegradable. And that is obviously great because it means that when we throw it away, it can be fully broken down and then recycled by microorganisms. So we're not actually causing any long-term harm to the environment in that case. The problem here though, is that a lot of the time it's used for food packaging, but we can't put it in the microwave. So not microwavable. Microwavable. So it's not microwavable, which limits its uses really. And a compromise could be to create things like plastic bags out of PLA plus other plastics. So if we mix together PLA and other plastics, we can get fairly biodegradable plastic bags 
They will biodegrade slower than pure PLA, but it will be way quicker than if we just had other plastics such as polystyrene or polyethene, which are really, really hard to break down and it takes a good number of years for those guys to break down. So mixing them together sort of, sort of gives you a compromise, if you like. And so this sort of tells you that there are advantages, many advantages to using biodegradable plastics, but there are also some disadvantages. Disadvantages. So one case here is they have limited use. Limited use because, for example, PLA cannot be put in the microwave. That is a big problem if we want to make a food package for a food that we can microwave to, in order to cook. Another big one, and you've probably seen uh, my video on biofuels as well, if not, check that out. But the same issue lies here. We can use cornstarch in biodegradable plastics. We can also use cornstarch to produce PLA. Now, cornstarch is a crop. And if we are going to use crops in order to create plastics for packaging and things like that, that means that we are losing the ability to use those crops in order to make food. So cornstarch, etc., they take up farming space. So just like biofuels, we are losing some of the space in order to farm food produce, um, and instead we are producing plastics. Now, of course, you'll be able to think, well, the compromise to this is we just use all of our current food space in order to farm food and just clear more space in order to farm this stuff. But clearing more space is going to destroy ecosystems. It's going to ruin the environment and that is going to be detrimental uh, in a lot of ways. So there's always going to be a positive and a negative, And it's the fact that you can see both of those is going to get you in the right place to answer a comparison question. Okay, so moving on to another thing which you will often hear about is recycling. Recycling is very important because once we've used something, if we can turn it into something else and use it again, then it means we don't have to produce something from scratch, we don't have to use raw materials. Plastics obviously come from crude oil, which is a limited resource because it's a fossil fuel. Um, and so recycling is obviously good. Important here to note is that only some plastics can be recycled, not all of them. They also uh, have different properties to each other. The plastics can come in a variety of different forms, and that means the method by which we recycle them is going to vary. Therefore, if we mix up loads of different plastics which have different properties, it's going to cause us a lot of trouble when it comes to recycling. Therefore, you've probably seen symbols on different plastic uh, goods, and they'll look something like this. So here we have different numbers, which tell you which type of plastic it is. And then obviously we'll have bins or recycling points and it tells you which bins to put the different numbers in. These codes allow us to separate the different kinds of plastics into their own category. And therefore we can sort the plastics based on how they're recycled. As long as we put them in the right place, then recycling should be pretty straightforward. If we don't, then it can become very problematic because we need to separate them following this. So of course you need to be able to talk about advantages and disadvantages of recycling as well. Well the obvious advantages are we can keep reusing a material, it reduces the cost of producing the material from scratch, we also are being environmentally friendly because less emissions are being given off in order to produce more plastic because it comes from crude oil and it means that we are, in a way, using a renewable source rather than a fossil fuel, which would be your crude oil. On the other hand, it's very tricky to separate plastics. Easier things to recycle are things like paper and glass, because all of the paper can go in the same recycle bin and it's all recycled in the same way, whereas the plastics, we have to be very careful in separating them. And another problem, of course, is if someone puts the wrong plastic in the wrong bin, we have to spend time and money separating them into the right types of plastic. So I hope that's helped you understand what recycling is and why it's useful in terms of the plastics. And also that all plastics, um, or many plastics, will come in different varieties. Some are more environmentally friendly than others. Some will be biodegradable, which are the good ones, but that could also come with a limit to their use. Okay, so any questions, please comment below and I'll see you in the next video.